Okay, well, welcome everybody. I'm Katie here in Toronto and I'm here with my colleague Andrew in Ottawa and we're both really excited today to be um, sharing with you for EdTech uh, Ed Tech Camp on Air about Scratch 3.0 and what's new. Um, so we're really excited to bring this presentation to you and we would invite everybody to engage with us on Twitter through hashtag EdTechCampOnAir. Um, I'll turn it over to my colleague Andrew just to say hello and then we'll get started. Hi everyone, uh, excited to be here and uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so before we get into it today, we've just got a brief overview about what we'll be running through. So we're gonna start just mentioning briefly who we are, who is Kids Code Jeunesse and what's the type of work that we do. Andrew's gonna walk us through what it means to code to learn. Um, we'll look at the Scratch uh, platform and how that compares to MakeCode, which you would use for Microbit, if some of us are familiar with that. Then we'll take a look at the Scratch 3.0 interface, see what's new. Andrew will walk us through some of his or our favorite features in Scratch 3.0. And then we've got some great projects that we'll remix together and then some uh, resources that we're happy to share with everybody at the end of our presentation. So Kids Code Jeunesse is a national Canada-wide nonprofit organization. So we're dedicated to empowering children, teachers, and parents with the skills that we all need to thrive in the 21st century. So we bring digital learning experiences like code using platforms like Scratch and the Microbit through Make Code. Um, we bring these experiences into classrooms and we teach um, students, parents, teachers how to be better thinkers and better creators in the digital world that we live in. Um, and it's also bilingual. So one of our uh, projects that we have as a um, along with these in-class workshops is we also provide free resources to anybody and everybody who is interested in having um, uh, a code club or, or getting kids coding and tinkering on their own. Uh, and those resources can be found at uh, Code Club Canada um, and uh, .ca. And uh, we just got, I have the website up here so we can have a look at it. Um, and it's uh, again, just a volunteer led um, coding clubs. Uh, and we've got a bunch of projects you can find up here uh, after, you're, after you've registered. Um, and you know, it's, a, it's about just bringing kids um, together to, to learn how to um, create projects together, um, collaborate, um, and uh, yeah, we're we're always interested in um, libraries and schools uh, and community centers to to participate. And so uh, I would invite you to check that out. And uh, it can be one of the um, numerous we have uh, all across Canada. So uh, we're excited to for number seven hundred uh, coming up soon. There might be a prize pack or something for those those individuals. All right, and we're back. Okay. So what is it to code to learn? So code to learn is, um, we sort of break it down into three different areas. Um, and one of those is uh, looking at various concepts. And, and, and it's not just about like, we're not learning to code to become uh, programmers. We're coding to learn to become problem solvers, to become thinkers, um, and using those uh, co the coding um, platform and the coding concepts to help with with that. And so, you know, understanding that um, in coding, there's certain concepts like sequences, um, the order of operations that we um, where uh, actions are executed, uh, repetition, so having things repeat over and over and over again. Um, and then there's things like uh, variables that are just sort of placeholders for, for other 
um, bits of information. And using that with uh, the common practices we have in terms of like tinkering, just exploring and, and diving in with not really um, a, a super awesome foundation, but just that that willingness to learn and, and experimenting. Um, and once you get sort of f more familiar and starting to collaborate with people uh, and, and bringing those things together, and then we can start to um, sort of understand and connect things um, together. And then we start to, you know, work off of that um, to share our ideas. This is just a little bit of our framework about how we like to think about coding to learn and what that means. Um, as our slide comes up here, we've got a slide, um, here it is, Give Peas a Chance. So this slide is put together from an article done by Mitch Resnick um, talking about these peas, projects, passion, peers, and play. So just before we get into the platform, we'd like to sort of set the framework for our learning today. So starting with projects and thinking about project-based learning. So instead of giving puzzles or using puzzles, um, working with projects. So um, students and people and I myself, I learn best when I'm working on meaningful projects, when I'm generating new ideas, when I'm able to design prototypes, and when I'm able to keep iterating my ideas through that project. So allowing your students to have that meaningful project that they can work with and Scratch is great for that. And then also um, adding passion into the mix. So um, ensuring that your students are passionate about what they're working on, that um, with Scratch it's open-ended, there's tons of different sprites and backgrounds that you can use. So it was designed in that way to allow for lots of entry points for students, for them to be able to create something that they're interested in and passionate about. And then, of course, um, another really important aspect here is the social part. So being able to interact with your peers, to share ideas, to collaborate, to, to build on each other's work together, and to, to be able to, to have that atmosphere is important, especially when working in Scratch, but in other, in other aspects of code as well. Um, and then, of course, um, I quite like this one, but thinking about play and learning and creating spaces where play is not just an activity, but an attitude and a way of engaging with the world. So creating space where you can tinker, where you can push boundaries, you can be creative and take, take risks and to, again, keep iterating your projects. Um, so Andrew will now take us through um, something that's called the creative learning spiral, just going off of these um, P's here. Yeah, thanks very much for that, Katie. Um, so, as as uh, Katie was was talking about in the um, the four Ps, we when we start to create our projects and think about our passions, um, we start to imagine uh, how we would um, put these things together, and then once we start building and creating, um, and we you know at, at this point we're we're uh, we're thinking about well, uh, you know, it, it's not necessarily work once if it's part of your passion you're, you're starting to play with it and you start to share and interact with others and then once you're you know You, you share you interact you collaborate on things you can start to see where all this works This doesn't work uh, and others start to have those same sort of ideas and questions and and options for collaborating back and you start to reflect on your your current project and and how things are going and then you start to reimagine okay well how can i do this my sex second iteration on it or or my next time through it so it, it will start to be um you know build that project out and and you can start to share that with uh, with others all right, so as we turn now to look at the platform itself, we just have a quick comparison here between those of us uh, that are familiar with MakeCode, which is what you would use with the micro bit, and then Scratch 3.0 on the other side here. Um, so you can see that the platforms look really similar. They're both using block-based um, block coding. Um, one is not replacing the other. Um, they both have their value and their use, um, but this is just to show um, these two platforms here. And then if we continue moving along to look specifically at Scratch 3.0 and the new interface and what's going on here. So we've got this great image up here that just highlights some of the new 
um, pieces of code. For those of us that were familiar with old Scratch, um, this looks maybe just a little bit cleaner than the old version. There's a few new things going on here. You can see the extensions at the bottom to add um, text-to-speech, which we'll be talking about, and the pen feature that Andrew will walk us through as well. You've still got your space for the sprite and everything there. And then we'll just go on to our next slide. So, on a la même chose ici, on a la même image, mais c'est en français. Donc, c'est possible de dire scratch en français et aussi des autres langues. Um, so, it can be in both French and English, which is great, and other languages as well. So, we'll keep moving along here. Andrew will talk us through some of our, um, our favorite features in Scratch 3.0. Yeah, thanks very much, Katie. Yeah, so uh, some of the favorite features that I, that we've seen uh, and others have have been excited to 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 show. Um, one of them that I like is the inline delete. So that means that you can you can select one single block to delete, as opposed to pulling everything apart uh, and deleting a, a single block. Um, so that's really nice. Um, there's also a bunch of new blocks. Um, so that's really exciting to, to see and explore and create with those. Um, we've also got some uh, new updated uh, tutorials. So again, stepping through sort of the basic blocks that we might be uh, used to, as well as um, some of those new extensions that we'll, we'll see uh, momentarily. Um, some of the other nice things are uh, improved audio editing. So for those people that are uh, or for, for those individuals that are interested in, in uh, incorporating sound and music, um, that's very good um, for them to be able to step through that. Um, and then as we've said a few times for, before, we've got the extensions. So one of them that's really interesting is the text-to-speech. Um, so that ability to, to not just have our sprites um, communicate with um, bubbles, uh, or, or with speech bubbles, we now actually have them the ability to, to have them talk. Um, so that's really cool. We've got the translate to, to text. Um, so the ability to, to go between um, various uh, languages. So that's really neat. Um, and then the video sensing is also a really fun one to, to, to get more interactive with those projects. Um, that's been moved to the extensions uh, area as well. And uh, yeah, so what I would like to do now is to, to show um, some of the projects that uh, I've created um, for uh, this introductory to, to Scratch, um, just a couple of them, and then also uh, wanted to share some resources at the end here. And so, uh, for example, one of the ones that I really like is the, the pen, um, so the ability to draw, with that and so we'll just open up a new project here so now that we're up and running here sorry about the delay uh so again we're starting with sort of a blank slate um as as katie alluded to uh, nice layout nice clean layout um and we've got our little scratch cat here sort of the default um sprite um, and just below that, there's the attributes um, for that uh, sprite. Um, so we've got the X and Y locations on, on the uh, canvas here. Um, we also have the direction and the size. So the first thing I'm going to do, just because when we're drawing here, I don't want the sprite itself to get in the way. And so I'm just going to change this uh, to a smaller number. So we'll just say 25. Um, so we'll just make a small little, little cat there. And then, uh, so now I want to be able to do some drawing with that. So I'm going to need to to go down to the bottom left hand corner and grab the pen uh, extension. So you can see there's uh, nine different extensions here. So lots to to play and explore with. Um, but today we're just going to be starting off with the pen, and you'll see that it will just pop down uh, at the bottom of all the other categories. Uh, it has its own color. Um, attribute to it. So that's nice to be able to differentiate between the, uh, the different colors. So a few different uh, blocks that we'll need in today's example. We've got the erase all. So in case we uh, made a mistake. We've I all wonder, yeah, if you can just zoom that in for us, Andrew, that'd be great. Yeah. So I'm just going to put that here off to the side. Um, we've also got the pen up and pen down. So just like when we're drawing um 
on a piece of paper. We have to be very clear in our instructions. Um, so having the pen up or the pen down uh, when we want the the uh, the sprite to be drawing. And then the last thing that we'll grab from here is just to make it a little bit clearer. Um, we're going to just grab this to make the the um, the pen size just a little bit bigger. So we'll just put this sort of at the top here for now. And we'll change this just to uh, two for now, just to just to make it a little bit bigger. And then the other things that we need is a way to start our action. So we're going to get that from the events tab. And uh, I just like using the green flag clicked. So we're going to grab that and put that right at the top. And it's okay. We're going to click in that um, set pen size to two. And uh, the other thing is that we're going to get, because it, we're going to get uh, have all the same to the side, we might as well do some repetition in here. And so we can do that from the control. So I'm going to grab this repeat 10. We're going to change that 10 in a second. And then we have to get our sprite to move around. So we're going to go back up to the motion, and we're going to grab a move and a turn. All right. So we're going to take those, and we're going to be able to put them all together to get our sprite to move in a certain shape. So we're going to take our move and our turn, and we're going to put those inside of our repeat, because again, we're going to be repeating each side of it. Uh, and we're going to be drawing that out, so we're going to put our pen down first, and then our repeat, and then we can put our pen up. All right. So again, if we read this, we're going to, when green flag clicked, so at the beginning right here when I click that, we're going to set the pen size to two, so that's the thickness of the pen. We're going to put the pen down, and then we're going to draw something here, and then we're going to do the pen up. Now, what are we going to draw? Katie, what shape should I draw? Well, I was wondering if maybe we start start simple, like we're talking about with a square, perhaps. Okay, so we'll do a square. So how many sides do we have on a square? That'd be four, if I'm four not sides. mistaken. All right, so we got four sides. Now, with that, we're going to move. So we're going to repeat this action four times. So we're going to move 10 steps, and then we're going to turn 15 degrees. But 15 degrees isn't right, is it? No, that doesn't sound right to me for a square. OK, so we're probably going to go 90 degrees. All right. Sounds so better. Now, now let's try this out. So I'm going to press the green flag, and there we go. But I don't know if you can see it. I'll move my cat out of the way. You can see it's there, but it's a little small. All right, so I'm just going to click on the erase all, and I'm going to make it bigger. And the way to do that is the move ten steps. So let's maybe make it 120 steps, just to make a nice big one. I don't know if it's big. We'll find out. And so we're going to press on the green flag, and there we go. So there's a, a basic um, square. And we can start to change our uh, turning angle as well as the number of repeats. And if you want to create uh, different sizes, we can just change the numbers there. All right. You feel good about drawing a square now, Katie? I think I could do that on my own. Yeah. Good. Maybe change a shape too if I feel adventurous. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'd, I would invite you to do that. <laughs> Um, so the next uh, extension that I wanted to chat about was the uh, talking uh, or the text-to-speech. Yes, I like this one too. Yeah. So we're just going to jump inside the project here. So there's our project page. Um, and we're just going to jump inside to have a look at the code. Well, first we're going to run it, and then we're going to have a look at the code. Are you back with us now, Andrew? I think so. All right. Yes. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah. So let's try that again. Hi, rabbit. Hi, bear. All right. Okay. So um, what we have uh, going on here, so we've got our hare uh, and we've got our bear walking in and saying hi to each other. And so this first little bit of code here is just to have them uh, have the hare. So as as you can see, um, we've got the hair selected here. So the code that we see here is associated with the, the hair. And so we can see it sort of uh, hopping in, uh, changing its 
um, its direction, as well as its costume so that it looks like it's hopping in. And same thing with the bear here. We see the first little bit of the code is just uh, to get the bear to walk in. And then the last bit is really the, the exciting part with the new extension. Um, and so that's where it's speaking, hi, rabbit. And then what it does here is it lets all the other sprites know that I've finished this sequence of code and that the rabbit is sort of waiting and ready for when that broadcast goes out. And so when it, it receives the broadcast that it's done or that bear is finished walking and says, hi, rabbit, then the uh, rabbit can say, hi, bear. And so again, just a very uh, simple introductory um, project with uh, you know using that text to speech. And so you can have them instead of doing the speech bubbles back and forth for your sprites, you can actually have them do uh, communication. Um, and the interesting thing about this is you can also add in um, with the 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 text. Uh, the translation as well, so you can start to get in there with uh, different, different, um, different languages. Different uh, voices are also interesting too, as well, um, and sort of changing the accents. Um, so that's that's fun to get the the kids to start to to play with that uh, if they've if they enjoy doing the accent part of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. but remembering that the translate is only as good as Google Translate. Correct. That is yeah. That that, that is uh, still lots of fun. Very true. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the last uh, thing that I want to show off uh, or, or talk about, which I, I think is really a good um, conversation starter uh, or a, a good project. Um, if the kids are uh, not sure where, uh, where to start um, is to uh, just use the random. Um, so, what they do is down in the in the bottom right hand corner. You, instead of instead of just choosing a background, you click surprise, and so that'll give you your um, background. So we've got uh, we're up on the soccer field, and I'm going to actually take two new sprites. So I'm going to delete this um, scratch cat, and then I'm going to go and get a new sprite. So again, just choose a sprite, click surprise, and then we're gonna choose another one. So again, just choose a surprise. And then um, from here, we have... Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if we have a milk carton and what's the green thing, Andrew? I can't That's tell. a paddle. Okay. Yeah, so now we've got a milk carton and a paddle. What do we? What do you think? What What can we do? A um, milk carton and a paddle on a soccer field. Yeah, so we've got a milk carton on a paddle on a soccer field. So we could have a game where you're trying to balance the um, the the milk on the paddle. Maybe that would could be an interesting one. What do you What do you think would be another interesting project? Maybe well, I'll see. I know we had a suggestion earlier to make, um, I think it was raining T-Rexes. Maybe we can make it rain milk cartons. <laughs> yeah, we could rain milk cartons and then try to catch them with the paddle. Yeah. And now we've got um, yeah. So there's lots of different options in terms of like where we're going. Uh, I just added a, 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 ran, a ran, another random sprite and we got a truck in here. So maybe the truck has got to uh, deliver the milk cartons to the kids on the soccer field. I, I don't know. Like, the the sky the o, the only limitation is your imagination on this this sort of thing so uh, lot, lots of different things uh, available um, yeah so uh, those were a few few examples of uh, what we've what we're what we're excited about in terms of what's new um, and we definitely want to to hear from you about what other things you're interested in um, and then Katie what what sort of resources do we have for them 
Yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff to revisit here. So for instance, feel free to go back and play with those um, projects that Andrew has created, make them your own and change them around. Um, but here we've got a number of resources to help you on your Scratch coding journey. Um, so Scratch and Practice is something new that they've developed. Um, there's some great resources here through Jim Cash, his Scratch Math Lens, so making curriculum connections through math. Um, our Code Club that Andrew talked about earlier has got some great resources. And then our website, Kids Code Jeunesse, also has some other great um, Scratch resources and some lessons that have been tested in classrooms. And then here we have some resources um, for Scratch 3.0 and the microbit. So one of the new things with Scratch 3.0 is that it can be paired with the microbit. Um, so we haven't talked about this today. There's a few parameters and um, restrictions that you need in order to be able to use the microbit. So here they are here. So feel free to go through these resources. Check out this page here to get yourself connected with the microbit if you're interested. Um, and we'd both like to take this time to say thank you for being with us. We hope that you've learned something. Um, you can reach out to us on Twitter. Um, and here I am in person, so I'm not just a talking a talking voice. Um, and I'll turn it over to Andrew um, as well, just to wrap it up for us. Yeah, thanks again, everyone, for, for coming by. It was great to, to share with you. Uh, and we definitely would love to to see some of your your learning, what what you've you've learned yourself, and what you're going to share with your kids in in school. Uh, you can use the uh, EdTech Camp on Air uh, hashtag with that, and please feel free to to follow Katie and I, as well as Kids uh, Code S for for more resources for sure. Thanks very much. Bye everybody. Bye.